talk about, we're going to do a little bit of foam rolling. And we're also going to go ahead and get going with the Viper. So I'm going to start. I was, I told some people earlier, um, and hopefully people can just keep coming to the, the session as they come in. But Viper is about a, a concept called loaded movement training. L M T loaded movement training is takes into account mass and momentum. And so when we talk about performance and every single one of you guys to me is an athlete, you're my athletes. So stop thinking about yourself that this is exercise. When you're doing programming that I'm putting out there, you're training, you are systematically progressing things. So the beauty of loaded movement training is that most of the function that we need to stay safe and to not get injured is, uh, deceleration it's how can you handle running downhill it's how can you handle walking without having a wobbly knee or a hip that falls out or rotation through the through the shoulders so the bottom line is we are training deceleration and we're going to get mass even though this is only 8k when we start moving it quickly this whole fascia line and the musculature associated with decelerating a lateral step comes into play. And all of a sudden, we are getting better. We are getting stronger. We're getting more robust. Okay? So let's get started. We're going to go through a really quick little foam roller uh, routine. So hopefully while I was talking, you went and got your foam roller. And we're just going to start down on the ground. And as you know, we just don't have to take a lot of time to get this moving. So we're going right below the calf. I don't know when in my life I got really comfortable with repetition, but I am really comfortable with repetition. So I don't mind um, doing the same thing, especially if it works and produces great results. So foam rolling from the bottom of the body, working my way up, is just what I do. It's like drinking coffee every day. It's like going to Hawaii a few times a year, hopefully again someday. I go to the same place. I stay in the same condo. I drink the same things. I'm kind of boring that way, I guess. So repetition is just part of the deal. This is not, we're gonna take that right up to the hips, guys. Turn the left leg over right, come back to the left and work on that lateral hip. Just a little bit of check-in. Um, if you're on Strava, I just decided to get back onto Strava. So if you want to follow each other and we can kind of give each other kudos on Strava, um, let's see if we can get that going. So it was a social platform for endurance athletes that I actually got a little bit too competitive. So I got off it, but now I'm looking for things to get me entertained. Okay, take it all the way to the upper back. Let's Strava, just... Strava name. Strava name. My Strava name is probably Aaron Carson. Uh, and just work through your upper back here. And we have to accept each other as friends. People have to say, hey, I want to be your friend. I want to follow you on Strava. So it's more of a profession. It's a, it's a kind of a nice courteous thing and way of doing business. Okay, rolling through that upper back. That's moving really well. Okay, all right, right into our half kneeling hip openers. So let's go into hip opener one. We're just at a 90-90. Leave knee, hands on the hips, and we're just gonna, we're, we're ramping up. We're getting ready for a workout, so we can actually move a little bit quicker. We're bringing the nervous system up. Up regulating the nervous system. Good. Switch to the other side. Half kneeling hip openers. Again, these never go away. As long as you're going to sit in a chair, as long as you're going to drive a car, you need to do hip openers. Good. All right, let's take that foam roller. Part of our hip opening series involves uh, a back lunge every now and then. So we're going to take that foam roller right at chest height. And we're just gonna rotate. Let's start with this side to side. So before we actually add the load of the Viper, 
we need to make sure the body's moving well. I really hope my friend Lucas from Poland is on the call today, because if he isn't, he will be on the replay. And I'm really looking forward to doing some work with you, Lucas. So thanks for the chat yesterday, for sure. All right, guys, let's take a little bit of a split stance. So just about that long, okay? So just long and kind of wide. We're gonna take the foam roller down on your back hip, and we're just gonna do a PNF pattern. It's like hitting a tennis ball. You're loading up that lead leg. Hips are coming back here and forward here. Back, four, five. And as you come up, we start to decelerate on that lead hip. Three, two, and one. Good. Switch to the other side, same thing. Not a long stride, just comfortable length on that split stance. Foam roller on your back hip. We just rock back and forth. So you can see I load up the front leg and then come over to the back. Let's go 10 of those. Three, four, five. Scoop from the bottom. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. All right, a little bit of foundation training. Foundation training is about resetting the nervous system, resetting the fascial system. So let's go one and a half times shoulder width, and you can see both of my toes are turned in. So turn your toes in, guys, because that is going to internally rotate your hips. It's going to bring your pelvis in, and that's what we always want. We're going to be really patient today. Take three fingers under, pinkies on your hip bones, thumbs on your bottom rib. The goal here is to expand the rib cage 360 degrees, okay? So we're using our measuring sticks to ensure that after we inhale, we don't collapse. We've set these measuring sticks. We stay wide through the back. Big breath in, exhale. You're knitting your abdominal cavity right here. Knit nice and tight. Big breath in. We've got three more huge breaths. Working the muscles of respiration. And one more big breath. Good. We take the arms into long wing, palms face me. Hips drop to the back about six inches. Scoop the hands from the bottom. Reach your hands way out in front, hips way to the back. On a scale of one to 10, give me an intensity through your hamstrings of about a five. Okay, so if they're super, super on fire right here, back it off, bring your hips a little bit more underneath of you. Come right back out of that. Stay facing me, I'm gonna give you just a little side view of how far back, load up your heels, Hands, drop your elbows. Make sure that your shoulders aren't up around your ears. Drop your shoulder blades. Drive your hips to the back, hands to the front. Push your fingertips hard together. On a scale of one to 10, about a seven. Squeeze, shoulder blades down, chin back, chest up. Five, four, push those fingers together. Three, two, one, come right back out of that. We're going to scoop forward one more time into one more founder. Drop your shoulders, drop your elbows. Fingertips are tight and strong together. Drive your hips to the back. Chin back, chest up. Pretend my hand is on the back of your head. And you're just kind of pushing back. And come right back out of that. Good job. We're going to go into a nice little woodpecker reach. So it's that same, let's go right leg back. Everybody with me, right leg back, left leg forward. That's gonna help in the cueing, okay? So right here, we want a 50-50 weight distribution, okay? So I have just as much weight on my back foot as I do on my front foot. Float your hands to your heart. From right there, we're in a very relaxed position. We're gonna take a big inhale, and we're gonna rotate and reach through the belly with two hands up, just like a, a barber shop pole. So no side bend in this. Ready? Here we go. Nice big reach. Long through your belly. Give me three big breaths here. Good. 
and then just bring it back to the middle. Good. Switch sides. Okay, so straight on, on view, and it's, it's nice when you have a zipper because you can see how straight everything is. So you can see this one on my sternum here. Okay, hands are right out in front of the sternum. 50-50 weight distribution. As we inhale, see how I'm straight ahead. There's no side bend. Don't side bend. Reach up. Give me three big breaths here. Reach up as high as you can. Two. And one more. And three. And relax. Float your hands back to the heart. Good. All right. Let's grab that viper and put it straight out in front of you. The beautiful thing about the Viper and the challenging thing about the Viper is that it moves. So as we do this next series, just recognize it's gonna go out in front of you a little bit. You might have to pull it back. Just own your Viper, <laughs> okay? So don't let it frustrate you because it's part of the deal. You have to control the Viper. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hold your body very, very stable, okay? We're gonna look at all these different aspects of how the body can move in a more efficient way. One of it is to be really mobile and be able to move in all three planes of motion with beauty and ease. The other thing is that we need, need sometimes for it to be very stable so that it can actually, things can move around me and I won't respond to them because I can hold stability. We need both. And the stronger you get, the better your mobility will get and the better your stability will get because you as a system just become stronger. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to tilt the Viper. And all we're gonna do is be very stable and still, and the center of gravity changes because the Viper is tilting. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Belly button tight to your spine. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Good. Step a little bit to one side. We are gonna step to the right. I'm going without the Viper on the first one. Do you see how my knee is underneath of me? When I land laterally, there's a force that's trying to pull me that way. You guys, we call this the perfect lateral step. We're going to step, keep that underneath of you, and keep your feet in. So do not externally rotate your foot. That's not who we are right there. It's not bad. It's just not who we are. Okay? So perfect lateral step and tilt. Perfect lateral step and tilt. This is step right, reach right. Three, four, we're adding a little bit of load to that lateral step. Seven, eight, just match my pace. Nine, 10, there's your deceleration right there. 11, 12, 13, 14, good, 15. Now, we're gonna to go to the other side. Let's go right into it while the heart rate's coming up and then I'm gonna talk just for a quick second. Get that perfect lateral step. Keep the knee underneath of you. Two, three, four. Tilt the Viper. Five, six, seven, eight. Keep your speed up. Nine, rhythm and timing. 10, 11, that's the nervous system. 13, 14, 15. Going back to the first side. We're going to go step right, reach left. We're going 15 reps. Ready? Step and reach. One, two, three. If this hurts your knees, what I want you to do, step, but don't bend too much. We'll get you there. I'm, unless there's some structural damage, I'm going to be able to get you into more knee flexion just by working mobility of the hips. I'm guessing that that's probably very close to 15. <laughs> Good job, guys. All right, heading the other way. Step left, reach right. Here we go. This is a viper tilt. And as it drops to the ground, it gets heavier because of momentum. That's it. Uh, 
I wish I had an assistant in the chat room to tell me that was probably 13, 14, 15. Okay, good. Let's go down to half kneeling. Now, there's two ways. There's many, many ways we can grab the viper, okay? So if you don't have one, you can see there's handles right here. I call these short hands, and this is long hands. So short, long. So this would be short right, long left. Short left, long right. That makes sense? Okay, good. Over here, we have a suitcase handle. Okay, so there's things that we'll use that for as well. So let's go half kneeling. Set the viper on its end. The first movement we're gonna do, this is a foundation training movement. We're gonna drive the hip to the back. Right knee is down and we're just reaching through and a palm that is up. And that just is a nice position for your shoulder blades on your ribs when your palm is up. Drives the shoulder blade down. Two more of these, hips to the back, hand to the front. Good, let's go to the other side. Nice big posture, hips driving to the back. This left knee is down, left hand to the front. Two. Five. You should feel that a little bit in the lead leg hamstring. Let's go one more of those. Okay, good. Let's grab that viper. So this is going to be a hip drive. Okay, so this is an upper body challenge for the, for the most part. And we're going to do, this is a hip drive. See how that just rocks forward? Hip to the front. I'm adding tension to the anterior capsule of the right hip. Okay, so the viper is going onto the right hip. We're gonna go hip drive and scoop from the bottom. That same PNF pattern. Two, three. Get a little bit of speed, get a little momentum. Four, five. The more speed you bring, the more tension goes into that right hip. 10, same thing, other side. Right leg in front, left knee down. We're just gonna scoop up, PNF pattern, 10 times, two, three. If you need more padding under your knee, go get it. Five, six, seven. You wanna be able to stop it at the top, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, good. We're going back into the woodpecker. The woodpecker series from foundation training is a beautiful primer for lunge patterns. Okay, so we're gonna go right hip back with a woodpecker. This is the stance. Float the hands to the heart. Now let's go ahead and put a little bit of forward lean on that. Let's go 70% of the load of your body. So this is much lighter in your back leg. Load that up just a little bit with the hands. Start to push into your forefoot. Specifically pushing into your big toe. From right here, drop your elbows, drop your shoulder blades, push your fingertips together. Push into your big toe. Good. And with no load at all, we're able to add intensity to that lead leg just with our own body weight, okay? So right there, stand tall. Load up the lead leg, 70%. Come into that long wing position. Scoop from the bottom. Bring the hands together in that sphere of tension. Press into your lead leg. Little bit of hip flexion. Your hips go back as your chest comes forward. And you load up that lead leg. Hold strong there. Push your fingertips. Bring more intensity to your hands. Five, four, three, two, one. 
and just come right back out of that. Okay, let's grab the Viper. Now, what we're gonna do now, we did a tilt, right? This is tilting. From the tilting, we can begin to shift. Shifting goes side to side. So if I did a Viper tilt, I can also do a hip shift. And right there, hips are going back to the back just a little bit and off to the side. So let's hip shift, Viper tilt, two, let's go five of those. And from right there, both knees should be bent, your butt is back, and you're loading your lateral glute, glute knee. Three. So there's a little bit of forward reach with the Viper. Four, let's go one more of those, five. I'll do the next one kind of sideways so you can see that. So you hold the Viper in your right hand. We're gonna shift to the right with the hip and you can see how I'm reaching a little bit to the side and a little bit to the front with the Viper. And that helps to load my other hip. Did I do that one? Yeah, I need to do the other side. We need to do the other side, sorry about that. Okay, so hip shift left and reach over to the right with the Viper tilt. One. Two, we're waking these guys up. Three, mobility for the hips, as well as the lat. Four and five. Let's go ahead and alternate arms, alternate sides. Viper tilt, hip shift. One, two, and if you look down at my feet, you can see my ankles are also mobilizing here. Three, four, Five, six, seven, hip shift, eight, nine, one more, and 10. Okay, so that is tilting. Now, the other thing we can do is we can shift the Viper. So how did we start this workout? We started with tilting and stability. Now we're gonna shift and stabilize. And this is at chest height. So in Aaron speak, this would be level two. Shift, shift. And it's a very subtle core challenge. Now, let's viper shift position two and hip shift at the same time. So we get that counterbalance going, we got feet about shoulder width, Shift and shift. Three, four. Hips are going to the back, guys. Five, six, seven. Adding load to the lateral fascial line of the body. There we go. So why would we want to shift? We want to be able to shift because all of these muscles are stabilizers in this sagittal plane. So when you're moving front to back, it includes backwards, this is the sagittal plane of movement. This is the frontal plane. And this is the transverse plane. So you don't have to remember much. And there's lots of different ways people talk in, in planes, people talk in segments, people talk all different languages. Let's just speak sagittal plane, frontal plane, transverse plane. Super simple, okay? So let's go into a shift. Uh, why would we wanna shift? So that we're stable. The more stable we are, the faster we can run, and the more resilient we are as people, as humans, okay? so. We're going to shift and stabilize one more time. Here we go. We're going to build it into something. Shift, shift, no movement. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Little relax. Touch the ground. Come back up. Hip shift and viper shift. One. 
two, three, sit back into the hips, four, five, six, seven, eight, good, nine, and 10. All right, those hips are starting to get a little more mobile. Let's take a wider stance. Some of you might be asking, why is she wearing a sweatshirt? Isn't she hot? Uh, I am, I'm starting to get warm. <laughs> but we're gonna stick with it because we've got some momentum. Okay, we're gonna work the transverse plane. We're dropping the viper between the legs. Left arm is in front. Come back up, switch the arms. Come back up. We're just gonna thread the needle here. Three, four, mass and momentum. Let it pull, let it drop. Five, six, we got 10 of these. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Take a little breather, shake the legs out. We're gonna do that again. Thread the needle. We're getting momentum as we drive through the hips. Here we go, ready? One, two, three. It's a little bit like kettlebell. Four, five, six. Fitness professionals constantly steal from each other. Eight, it's what we do. And if we're smart, we do it. Nine, I think this is extra. 10, all right, good, shake the legs out. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to build a box and that's gonna put us into some Viper lift, okay? So we can do so many things. We have now shifted the Viper, we have tilted the Viper. Now we're going to lift. And this is gonna look a little bit more like a traditional exercise, but then we're just gonna take it from there and, and jazz it up a little bit. Okay, so feet are nice and straight. With the white shoes, you can really tell that this isn't happening. You don't have externally rotated feet. All we're gonna do is go with straight legs or a little bit of a bend. Down all the way to the ground with the Viper and then all the way up. All the way down. We're gonna do 10. Two, all the way down. Three. Four. Long lats, big reach. Five, six, seven. So this is the bottom of the box, and this is the top of the box. One more. 10. Okay, so now we have to build the box and finish the box with the sides of the box. So with short arms, short grips, we're gonna go ahead and hip shift and put that viper on its end. So let's go five times to the right. You're shifting to the left, counterbalance, just like that. We're gonna do five of those. This is number three. And my left hand is high, that's important. You could totally do it this way, but I want you to learn to do it this way, okay? Because it's just a little easier on your shoulders, okay? So we'll call that traditional box. Here we go. Other side. Feet are nice and straight. Two, three, four, one more. Five. Okay, so now we are going to build five boxes. We're going to go bottom top. Right side, left side, that's the pattern. Patterns are important because everything gets easier once you get a pattern. Once things get easier, we can make things harder. <laughs> that makes sense, okay? That's the systematic approach to how we're training. Okay, ready? Bottom of the box, top of the box, right side of the box, left side of the box. That's one box. That's two boxes. That's three boxes. 
I'm hearing all kinds of popping and cracking over here. <laughs> all right. Okay, good. There we go. Let's get down under one knee. Usually if I give you a cue, it's because I'm feeling something. So last time we were on our half kneeling, I said, if that feels bad on your knee, go get another pad. I was feeling it. Okay. We're going to regress the movement a little bit. Take the lower leg out of it. Okay. Yes. And if you're taking time to add to the chat box, we've got about seven more minutes of this workout. So take a second and we can deal with questions um, in about seven minutes. Okay. So here's what we are. We're down on our right knee. We're going to do head wraps using short arms starting down on the right hip, okay? And we're just gonna wrap our head with the viper and finish back down here on the right hip. <sighs> Stable on the bottom, mobile on the top. This is a great exercise for golfers because of that exact statement. You want to be stable on the bottom and be able to produce speed on the top. Speed it up a little bit. Three, four, and one more. Good. Mass and momentum. This 4K Viper gets heavier and heavier. Okay, down on your left knee. We're going to go head wrap. A couple of slow ones. Remember to use your breath and elevate your rib cage. Let's start to bring the heat a little bit. Six, you could add a hip drive. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Head, head wraps just like anything, can bring speed, okay? So I'm done with my mat, let me get that out of the way. Okay, so we'll start into some tilting, all right? We're gonna go five rounds, which is gonna give us 20 landings. I'm gonna do it mini, here's a mini version. Step right, reach right. Step left, reach left. Then we're gonna open up the stride and step to the back of the room, tilt it to the right, and come on back. Tilt it to the left. Come on back. So that's a transverse step. I open up my hips open and then they close. My hips open and then they close. Okay? So if you if the lateral lunges are hurting your hips or your knees, you might look like this. You're still stepping. There's just not a lot of level change. And when I say level change, it means your head is going down which means your whole body's going down, okay? Everybody else, find your movement bubble. We're gonna go side, side, right, left, uh, reach. So everything's very easy. Step right, reach right, come on back. Step left, reach left. Step to the back, step to the back, back down, two. Here we go for three. Here we go for four. This is multi-planar stepping, also known as matrix lunging. Last one. All right, so let's bring it all back to the beginning. We're gonna do a back lunge with a shift. We're gonna alternate sides with the shifting. We want huge stability on the bottom part of the body and we want strength on the upper body. So we're gonna go shifting at position two, back lunge, same leg, right leg back over and over again, okay? So you can hold that here or you can hold that here. This is a little easier because gravity is helping you hold it. If you can drop it to the front and hold it with your wrists, you're gonna get stronger in your upper back. So maybe you can do 
some of them shifting like this and some of them shifting like this. Just know it's okay if you're moving around a little bit, okay? All right, position two with the Viper. Here's what it looks like, I'll do one. Step back, shift to the right. Same leg back, shift to the left. You got it? Okay, it's always right leg back for this set. 10 reps, hold it at chest. One, two, three, four, five, getting really hot now, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Last set of the day, back lunge. Big position two. Ready? Left leg back. Shift right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, <laughs> hopefully you felt that. Woo! That is our first kind of ramp up into Viper training. The Viper is an amazing tool. Um, Michelle Dalcourt, founder of Institute of Motion, is a good friend of mine. I was one of the founder, founding coaches uh, with Viper, but especially in these times when it's gonna become more and more important that we're self-sufficient. You know, we always knew that as triathletes, we were always time crunched a little bit, especially if we wanted to have friends and community. So having the ability to have one Viper, a couple of kettlebells, um, in your in your repertoire at your home is going to really have a no excuses um, place for us to continue to become more robust as human beings be able to fall down mountains hopefully be able to climb mountains um, racing is not even a th thought in my mind right now the most important thing that i'm focusing on and that we all should be focusing on um, is our health and how we are going to ultimately uh, age and, and do well as we go. So throw me some questions if you want. <laughs> I know Cindy, my, Cindy Lefkoff just said that my Viper matched my shirt. And you know, that's, that's kind of how I roll. I was raised um, in the Garanimals uh, time of life. My mom used to take me to JC Penny. <laughs> uh, okay. See you tomorrow. Hein. Ciao. So tomorrow's workout will be very complimentary to today. Oh, Lucas, it's so good to see you. I wish I could see you, um, but I'll be sending you an email later today. But uh, um, hopefully you're starting to understand uh, how we're going to build and rebuild uh, that body. But the, the biggest thing about being able to, to produce force is the ability to fall and the ability to recover and, uh, and the ability to heal. Uh, those are all our, our big, big, most important thing. How heavy is my Viper? Hi, Sheila. We want, no, well, you can get a 10K, Sheila, but I don't, you can't shift well at all with a 10K. You have a hardcore uh, trainer. I don't know who it is. Maybe it's Simon Bennett. You can get a 10K, Sheila, for sure. Um, that'll be your heavy Viper. I want you to have a heavy one and a light one. So the lightest Viper, guys, buy it today. The code is ECFIT15, so you can go to www.viper.com, buy now, at checkout, use ECFIT15, and buy a 4K Viper. Uh, trust me, I am a badass athlete for my age. I barely use, if ever, the 6K Viper because I want to have quality of movement. Um, but Sheila, so yes, any, anybody in North America, that, that code will work. If you're in Europe or Asia, you need to go to fitpro.com, F-I-T-P-R-O, 
vipers.com and they will have vipers there. They don't look like these vipers. Michelle um, reinvented these. And another great Canadian, by the way, uh, Michelle Dalcourt. So the, he reinvented these vipers and they're just beautiful. They're fun to move with. But the old ones that uh, you can get in Europe is really, really cool. So you can totally, you know how the viper, so Lynn in Alaska is saying, I just used uh, two rolled up yoga mats. The viper was actually invented because the guys, Simon and Michelle, were training the hockey team and they just took some of those runner mats that we all, we use them in our business when the weather's bad. And um, we, they just use duct tape <laughs> around some mats. So it will totally work for sure. You will learn to love your Viper, Stephanie. We will give you a reason and a why. The why is the biggest everything. So yay, this is just wonderful. Okay, cheers. Um, Lucas, yeah, Poland Fit Pro for sure. Okay. All right, everybody. Peace out. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, we'll do a strength session tomorrow. So a little bit heavier. Make sure you have a challenging weight. And uh, I'm just thankful that you guys are all finding so much value here. So peace. Take care. Well, and on top of that. Yeah, it looks pro. Exactly.